Greetings, New Zealand naturopath Eric Backer. I'm the author of Candida Crusher and also the formulator of the Candida range of supplements. I have a question here from a man called Angelo Macronakis. Angelo sounds like a Greek guy. I really like Greek people. I used to have a lot of Greek patients when I practiced uh, in Brisbane in Australia many years ago. And I really enjoy uh, the Greek uh, festivals, the Greek culture. Hi Eric, I just want to say thanks for all your amazing content. Your videos have been extremely helpful alongside your book. I was just hoping you could make one of your extensive videos on what the differences are uh, with the lifestyle, nutrition and supplementation when dealing with leaky gut as well as candida as opposed to, as opposed to just candida, if, that, if there are any at all. I'd greatly appreciate this. Thanks for your good work. Keep up the good content. Well, Angelo, this is uh, for you, my friend. Uh, not just because you're Greek, and I like Greek people, but also because it's a very valid question. What is the difference with treatment if we look at lifestyle, nutrition, and supplementation with leaky gut as opposed to candida? Well, people with leaky gut, and in fact, many people have got leaky gut. I would go as far to say as anyone who lives a diet based on Western diet and lifestyle principles will have leaky gut to some degree. And that's because we all tend to eat food uh, that contains some element of chemicals, preservatives, emulsifiers, you know, all these sort of things in our food, including antibiotics, uh, artificial sugars. They seem to permeate uh, our lifestyle, our diet, and to a big degree. So unless you've got an extremely austere lifestyle and you eat everything completely 100% unprocessed and you grow all your own food and live on a farm and wear a straw hat and don't have electricity and drink pure water that's been purified and all this sort of stuff you know what I mean uh, you're going to get some kind of element of chemicals into your diet uh, and that can affect the, the membrane or the gut of the diet now some people have got seriously bad leaky gut how do you know you've got bad leaky gut well if you're drinking alcohol on a regular basis you will have leaky gut period okay if you drink alcohol every day you will have a major leaky gut problem we know that if you take pharmaceutical drugs you'll have leaky gut you know you could be taking uh, pills for headache or arthritis pain uh, NSAIDs what we call non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs you could be taking drugs to block acidity of the stomach like Nexium for example Amiprazole uh, you could be taking anti-convulsants you could be taking antibiotics you could be taking antidepressants any pharmaceutical medication that you're on in time is going to cause leaky gut all right. So if you're in that category, you know, welcome to the leaky gut club. If you're eating um, commercially raised poultry, you'll have leaky gut. If you're eating grain-fed beef, you'll have leaky gut. How do I know all this stuff? Well, it's because I've been treating patients now for such a long period of time. I've done so many of these lactulose mannitol uh, digestive permeability tests that I've worked out that people who eat like this, who drink like this, will have leaky gut. Leaky gut predisposes you to a whole raft of potential different problems. It's one of the major things that can underpin uh, a lot of autoimmune disorders. These are diseases where the immune system starts attacking itself. No known cause, they say. Well, welcome to the club if you live in the Western country. I very doubt that leaky gut is a condition that affects many people uh, who live in underdeveloped countries, particularly people like who live in India who just eat lentils and rice, for example. Uh, you know, these people don't go to the corner shop and buy a can of Coke every day. They don't have uh, energy drinks, Red Bull for breakfast. You know, they don't have uh, fries for lunch. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? So when you're living a, a lifestyle based on um, an indigenous person who's living a you know, very simple lifestyle, eating a very basic sort of diet, I doubt very much that you're going to have uh, a strong degree of leaky gut. But let's talk about the treatment differences. Well, I don't really think there are a lot of differences between treating leaky gut and treating candida. Right? The principles in my mind are the same. The big thing I like people to stay away from with leaky gut are the foods that have a high potential for allergenicity in the body. So I tend to put people with leaky gut on a low allergy diet approach. Same thing I do with candida. I tend to put people with leaky gut on a no alcohol diet. Same thing I do with candida. Probably the big difference with uh, candida and leaky gut is we're dealing uh, with yeast infection. We're dealing with an immune system that has a little bit more twists and turns about it uh, than a person with digestive permeability. With digestive permeability also, 
uh, I would expect a much more uh, allergic potential to the diet than I would with candida. So many candida patients can, for example, tolerate gluten. They can, they can tolerate different types of foods you know, that some food police say they can't tolerate. Trial and error will tell the candida patient that. Whereas with leaky gut syndrome, I would tend to, and I know the person's got very bad leaky gut, I would be a lot tougher um, on their diet than I would if I, I had a feeling they had candida and a very mild case of leaky gut. So how do I know the difference? Well, easy, I look at the case history. Has the patient been on antibiotics for a long period of time? Does the patient have a huge amount of, of gut-related problems? It may not necessarily be candida. Well, how can you distinguish between candida then and leaky gut? Well, do a, do a stool test. And if you're in doubt, do a permeability test where two sugars are basically assessed, you know, where a person basically drinks uh, some sugars, particular sugars, and then we, we can basically assess what comes out of the urine to see, you know, what's being held back. There are different tests you can do, but I don't do the uh, intestinal permeability test anymore because I find that everybody has got leaky gut to a degree. Uh, it just varies. Uh, you know, some people have got it worse than others. I think the stool test is a more valid test uh, for determining um, you know, a wide range of digestive problems. And generally, you'll be surprised how many people think they've got candida when in fact they haven't got candida at all. They've just got bad bacteria and low level of beneficial bacteria. And these are often the people who've got serious leaky gut problem. I can pick leaky gut in the stool test without looking at the sugars, lactulose and mannitol, to see what aberrations are uh, as far as they're concerned. So how I would treat leaky gut um, if it was just purely on its own compared to candida, I'd be tougher on the patient, a lot tougher. I'd probably also be looking a lot more uh, at, the, at the fermented and the cultured foods. I really like the person to get into some kefir, tiny bits of kefir and yogurt, and I'd probably have a stronger element of probiotics and digestive enzymes in the diet, as opposed to the candida patient. The candida patient, I would tend to work a lot more with antifungal, antibacterial approach. The leaky gut, I wouldn't do it so much unless the stool test warranted that. I would tend to look more at digestive enzymes and probiotic approach. When it comes to the lifestyle, uh, Angela, what I would certainly recommend for both camps, leaky gut and candida, is to assess the element of adrenal fatigue in the patient. So if you're very tired, you're worn out, you know, you're fatigued, you wake up tired, you're fatigued in the afternoon, you've got blood sugar problems, you want sweet stuff all the time, uh, maybe some memory loss, confusion, sleeping disturbances. So if you've got the typical adrenal fatigue pattern, um, especially if it's really bad, that definitely needs treatment. And that will help the leaky gut to a large degree by getting the stress hormone cortisol balanced. I find people with good cortisol uh, balance have got a much easier ability uh, to get a handle on their leaky gut as opposed to people who are adrenally fatigued and who are not diagnosed or, or or that element's not corrected and they're purely treated for the leaky gut, I find that they can stay like that for years. But if you correct that adrenal fatigue pattern, and particularly if they got hypothyroidism and hypoadrenalism, if you correct that alongside their leaky gut, i.e. correct the lifestyle along with the diet, you're going to get a really uh, good result and a much quicker outcome. It's going to save the person a lot of money and a lot of misery. So the lifestyle is a very, very important thing to get sorted, which would underpin a lot of adrenal issues with people, and often does. Many patients I see that have been sick for years have got adrenal fatigue, and it's generally never assessed, it's never treated, and purely the gut is treated. There's so many doctors I know out there who just basically uh, are one-trick ponies. You know, they'll look at one particular thing. Oh, it's all candida. Oh, it's all mercury. We'll, we'll get rid of all the mercury fillings and you'll be cured, you know. Oh, it's all gluten. Stop eating gluten and the hemorrhoids will go. Stop eating gluten and you won't hate your mother-in-law anymore. All this sort of nonsense, you know. So don't fall for the one-trick pony practitioner. It's important that you understand that people get dysfunction on multiple levels, okay. Many people with leaky gut and candida have got an endocrine imbalance as well, or hormonal imbalance. And for females, it can affect them a bit differently for males. But if in doubt, these things need assessing by a healthcare professional. So I know I'm carrying on a lot here, Angelo, but you can see there's a lot of issues at stake here when it comes to uh, leaky gut syndrome and candida, especially if the patient's been sick for many, many years. 
generally unresolved long-term leaky gut and candida will mean an element of hormonal dysfunction that remains unresolved. Okay, And the unresolved hormonal dysfunction will generally mean unresolved lifestyle stuff, things that haven't been fixed up. So again, it comes back to lifestyle. And in my book, I wrote a lot about this, that 75% of recovery is lifestyle, okay, three quarters. And this is why a lot of people don't take it seriously, because you ain't going to make a lot of money out of giving people advice, as opposed to selling them pills or tests or drugs or surgeries or stuff like that. So when you spend time with patients and actually work out where the problems are and help them, you know, or assist them, give them some guidance so they can correct these issues, then you've, you've done a great service for that patient, if you, if you know what I mean. So, so that was a long-winded reply, I hope, um, to your question, Angelo. Um, you know, dealing with leaky gut as well as candida, um, as opposed to candida. So you are going to find some cases of people with yeast infection uh, on its own without leaky gut, but more likely... Most people with chronic candida, especially intestinal candida or vaginal yeast infection or serious jock itch will usually have leaky gut as well. So just remember, leaky gut, think more along the lines of, of healing the gut, reducing the inflammation, getting the bacteria right again. With candida, look a little bit more at an antifungal approach, getting the bacteria right. With a leaky gut, look more at getting the digestive enzymes working more efficiently, upper GI and pancreas uh, to help, you know, break foods down, uh, stop them from becoming too, affecting the permeability of the gut too much. Check out my product called Canzita Restore, which is an enzyme probiotic I specifically developed up for leaky gut and candida. It works quite well. Whereas the Canzita Remove is the antifungal, antibacterial uh, product, which is going to help cleanse the gut, get rid of all that crap. Both of those products work quite well together. Thanks for your question, Angelo. And um, I do miss the Panieri Greek Festival I used to attend uh, quite a lot in Brisbane. I really enjoyed the Greek culture, the music and the food, and uh, maybe one day I can uh, go to the Greek islands and really uh, enjoy that. Thank you so much. Bye-bye then.